Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on how to hack. And today we'll be discussing about file sharing option on your devices. So your devices could possibly be file sharing without even your knowledge. So how can we check on that, right? The first thing you can do on the left side of my Windows computer and on the right side of Kali Linux running. So you can go ahead and open up the folder and you can actually click on the network. And on network, you can select your computer name. All right, so all these are the devices in the network that actually has file sharing enabled. So very quickly, we can identify all these devices. So I can go ahead and double click onto my device name and we can look at the files that are being shared or the folders that are being shared. So immediately we can flag out all this. And this is what other users are going to see and they could try to access into these folders if they have the username and the password. And as more users are working from home now, a lot of the help desk troubleshooting has to be done over the internet. As a result of that, a lot of this file and folder sharing could have already been enabled on your device and the hackers could try to do a brute force attack or even an exploit against your devices to gain full control of all of the files and folders inside your device. Okay, so again, a very dangerous service that we have to be very careful of and we have to assess and audit it very, very carefully. Okay, and on the right side, all right, I have the Kali Linux, which is going to be our hacker's box. So I can go ahead and open up terminal. All right, so I can go ahead and use, for example, MMAP to help us scan, all right, for the device where it has the service, all right? So I can specify the IP address of the target machine, or I could even list out all the devices in the network and begin scanning on them to find out what kind of services they have running inside the devices. So in this case, we're just looking specifically for the file sharing option. It could be many other different kinds of services, protocols they're running inside the device that we could try to launch our attacks against. So in this case, in today's tutorial, it's going to be on a file sharing service. And file sharing service on Windows computer is usually on port 445, all right? So right here, we can look at it. And of course, there could be many different kinds of file sharing services, right? So for if you're scanning on Linux devices, it could be different port numbers, different kind of service naming, all right? And so on, all right? So what we're trying to look out for is on port 445. Looking over here, we see that it is being opened and we have the work group as work group. So what we can do next is to jump over into Metasploit Framework. So I can do a sudo msf console and we can go into Metasploit Framework and we could use specific modules to scan the device and try to find out whether there are any vulnerabilities or whether we could even launch a brute force attack. So you can enter search followed by SMB. So hit enter on this and we can look at all the modules available to run an attack, all right, using or against SMB, all right? So in this case, we can look at all the different kind of modules. So we have payloads, we have exploit, all right? We have auxiliary scanners as well. They can help us scan the device and look out for version, all right? And in this case, we're gonna look at SMB underscore login. So this is the part where we are doing a brute force attack against the device. And one really important thing I wanna highlight, all right, that we have also seen on the previous tutorial is that, okay, when we are launching attacks against end user computers or end user devices, you notice one really critical item. And that critical item is that when the devices are getting scanned or when the device is actually getting a brute force attack, there are no notification to the user, which is pretty scary. So if you're on a public Wi-Fi, you're on free Starbucks Wi-Fi, you are at the hotel or you are some place that is free Wi-Fi and another computer device or a hacker is scanning your devices, you have no idea. There's no alert that someone is scanning you. They're doing a brute force attack. And that's the scary part, right? You get no notification. So hackers could easily roam freely, all right, go from Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi, network to network, and launch all those attacks, and they don't get detected, all right? So over here, going back to the tutorial, right, on Kali Linux, I can enter use auxiliary scanner SMB, SMB underscore login. I can enter show options, and I can set the R host as 192.168.0.185. So this is the target machine, all right? Next, what I can do is set the SMB username. So in this case, SMB user, Loy Liang Yang. So again, do change it to administrator if you're testing out the devices to look out possibly for a different kind of administrative password. Okay, 
and which is again administrators are coming in at the highest privilege so they can do a lot more activities a lot more services they can run different kind of configuration on the device itself so you must secure your administrator accounts in your devices with very strong password if you can enable multi-factor authentication as well next we need to specify we need to specify the pass file all right so this is the list of passwords that we can inject into the service to help us flag out right what are the possible passwords that we can gain access or help us gain access into the device all right so we can set pass underscore file and i can specify the file that we have already created so over here set pass file slash tmp slash rock u.txt slash rock u.txt so again this is part of the wood list inside call linux that you can access all right and then after which you can extract that list of commonly used passwords and try to inject them into those login fields all right so in this case we are targeting specifically on smb all right so go ahead and hit enter on this all right show options again to ensure that you have set all the parameters the values properly so once you're done you're set go ahead and enter exploit and right here we got a good response okay so we have a plus all right green sign right here and it states the following success loy liang yang and the password of one two three four five six seven eight all right so we managed to get a username and a password so what we can do next is to use rpc client to help us access into the device okay so i can specify over here rpc client followed by the username all right followed by the ip address 192.168.0.185 hit enter on this and followed by the password okay so we got in the password earlier right here all right so the brute force attack worked and we managed to retrieve the password and don't be surprised right if you see administrator accounts using default passwords using admin as password administrator as password or even one two three four five six seven eight as password because a lot of times the administrators the help desk engineers need to quickly access your computers to troubleshoot the computers and sometimes all right a lot of these local accounts could be actually using default passwords which allow hackers to run brute force attacks very quickly against your device okay so go ahead and hit enter on this and now we're in all right so we are inside the device we have entered into the device and you can enter help which will show you all the commands that you can actually send all right into the device to get more information and you can download files you can get username you can get all these different details right so over here you can set user info you can set user info too you can look up domain all right you can enumerate domain so many different kind of instructions that you can actually send all right into the device so very very powerful tool for you to actually look at all the users inside the device all right so what can you do if you're a user and you're trying to protect your devices all right the first thing you can do is you can actually go under command prompt all right you can do a right click run as administrator click yes on this so what you can enter is net session to look at all the sessions that are currently running so in this case you can see over here we have the command completed successfully and we have a computer so this is 192.168.0.106 so this is the call linux ip address and they're assessing into your computer's sharing folder all right so do check this on your devices now that you're in this tutorial right look at any hackers or anyone who could be assessing a computer now going into your chat files and folders so that's pretty dangerous so do check this out very quickly okay so this is another indicator that your device may have already been compromised okay so do check it out so what you could do next is actually to kill off the sessions all right so in this case i can enter net session all right then you can enter slash del all right i'll delete enter on this and it states the following these workstations have sessions on this server all right and it states the following ip address 192.168.0.106 do you want to continue this operation enter yes hit enter on this if i go to net session again hit enter on that there are no entries in the list anymore and the hacker is now outside of your device okay and what you need to do is to quickly update the passwords inside your devices so that the hacker could not reuse those passwords all right to gain access again to your device next is that if you do not even share any files printers inside your device might as well just completely disable the service all right so what you can do is actually go under network all right so you have network and sharing center so go ahead and click on it and of course over here it has change events sharing settings so go ahead and click on this and you have turn on network discovery and you also have turn off 
file and printer sharing. So go ahead and click on it. All right, click Save Changes. All right, and now, all right, your device is no longer sharing any files, folders, printer in the network. All right, so if I go back into Call Linux, and what I can do is actually exit from RPC client. I can do MMAP. All right, dash SV 192.168.0.185 dash capital PN, hit enter on this, and you will see that the service is no longer there from our new scan. All right, from the new scan, we no longer see the service. So meaning that there is one less door for the hackers to actually break into your devices. So in this case, as you can see here, we only have HTTP and 3389 port number open. So once again, I hope you have learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. And we'll like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.